we train to be healthy, get fit, build muscle and strength. Ultimately, this should allow us to live longer. But is the diet we need to support our hard training increasing our risk of premature aging and death? The 2014 study that brings us in a question looked at two groups of people. One was between 50 and 65. The second group was 66 years of age and older. It was an extensive study of over 6,000 people. And what they found was that the low protein diets reduced the risk of mortality in 50 to 65 year olds. But the opposite was true with those over 65. In this group, low protein diets increased the risk of death. So what changed between the ages of 65 to 66 that all of a the sudden they required a high protein diet? The researchers felt this might be because the additional protein helps to offset age-related weight loss. They also cited the possibility of protein sensitivity playing a role. As we get older, our ability to absorb protein diminishes. They talk about the hormone IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor 1, but we'll come back to that in a minute. One of the biggest flaws I found with this study is that they didn't separate healthy and unhealthy people nor does it look at factors like activity and fitness level. These two elements clearly affect lifespan and mortality. Another study on longevity looked at over 3,000 people, 55 years of age and older, and found those with the most muscle mass lived the longest, and we need protein to build and maintain this muscle. One group in the first study that didn't benefit from increased protein, even over 65, who as a whole requires more protein, had diabetes. With diabetics, their hormones aren't functioning properly, most notably insulin. Two of the best things people with diabetes can do to improve their insulin sensitivity is to lose excess body fat and build muscle. Increasing your protein intake could help with this, but it needs to be done along with a properly structured training and nutrition plan that puts you in a slight calorie deficit. Another hormone that needs to be functioning properly is IGF-1, which turns on a growth pathway called mTOR. This puts the body into growth mode, allowing us to build new cells and ultimately muscle. This is a good thing, but when this pathway is turned on, other repair pathways are shut off, so the body isn't spending energy removing damaged, old, and malignant cells. When our bodies function correctly, the mTOR growth pathway gets turned on and off as needed. It goes wrong when it gets stuck in the on position, increasing our risk for things like cancer. Protein turns on mTOR and upregulates IGF-1, which isn't necessarily a bad thing considering something else that turns on mTOR is exercise. Exercise, including resistance training, improves our health and odds for a long life. According to a meta-analysis done in 2011, both low and high levels of IGF-1 are associated with increased mortality, so there's a healthy range you want IGF-1 to stay in. People with diabetes have more trouble with high levels of IGF-1 because of another hormone, insulin. According to an article published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, chronically elevated insulin levels increase IGF-1, which in turn can increase the risk of colorectal cancer. What we're starting to see here is it isn't protein that's the problem. It's an improperly functioning endocrine or hormone system. So after reviewing numerous studies, what does this article recommend as the best preventative measure for reducing overly high levels of IGF-1? They state, from a population and preventative perspective, it appears that modifying insulin levels by reducing obesity, changing diet, and increases in physical activity may be the most effective strategy for lowering levels of bioavailable IGF-1. This is great news because these are all things we can control. To illustrate how building muscle can improve our insulin sensitivity, a study published in 2011 found after looking at over 13,000 people that higher muscle mass relative to body size is associated with better insulin sensitivity and a lower risk of PDM, which is pre or overt diabetes mellitus. So how do we get started on the changes needed to live a longer, healthier life? Well, watch this video next to learn nutrition and exercise strategies to not only lose your love handles, but excess belly fat too, so we can keep working out while living a long and healthy life, and of course, having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.